one to be one to God is good all the time. God is good. Uh, we are continuing with our Bible study from Matthew 13. Matthew 13. We shall be applying the soap method as always. The soap method where always standing for reading the scripture. O is for the observation we get from reading the scripture, and A is applying what we have observed, and then the P is praying for God to assist us in applying what we have observed from the from the scripture. Let's begin with a prayer so that we shall be led by the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Ketra of this beautiful universe, we thank you with glory in your presence. We pray that you surround us with the Holy Spirit so that we will not be reading out of our own intellect, but through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This we pray that King, you and appreciating you. Amen. Matthew 13, verse 1. We read that someday Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the, the sea. And a great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat there. And, uh, and the whole crowd stood on the beach, and, uh, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they had not much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, he who has ears, let him hear. So we have read the scripture. What are we observing from the verses? What are we observing from the verses? My first observation is that we should be able to hear what our Lord and Savior is saying. We should be able to be the good soil that when the seed lands, we are able to have many fruits. An application. Let us read again from Matthew chapter 13 verse 1. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the, the sea. That is verse 1, that verse 2. And a great crowd gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat there. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying a sower went out to sow. And uh, who is the sower in this uh, scenario? The sower who goes out to sow. The sower who goes out to And so we are told in another passage that we should pray to the God of harvest to send us more laborers. For the harvest is large, but the laborers are few. We are told that we are not the one who sowed, but some, someone else sowed on our behalf. But we are now supposed to pray to the Lord of harvest so that he will give us more laborers and we shall have more laborers to go out in the field to, to harvest. So, who are we told uh, sowed? We are told others came before you and sowed. I think we are being referred to the prophets. We are being to refer to the all the saints of the Old Testament that uh, launched the principles that we are now using and that brought us the law of God. The, that was the, the sow. And when that seed landed, some were able to get from it, and some other people were not able to get from it. We are, here we are being told some landed on the on the path where the bird came and and ate. Some landed on a rocky ground. They did not get enough roots, and they withered away. And others fell on good soil, where they were able to grow well. Others fell on thorns, and when they were growing up, they were choked by the, by the thorns. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, we have seen that, and they had not much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought grain, some a hundredfold. Why did some bring a hundredfold? Others brought... 60 fold and others brought 30 fold. This refers us to um, the parable of 
the silver coins. We are told that some were given, uh, someone was given five coins, another one was given one coin, and the other, the last one was given, is it two coins? The parable of the, of the treasure coins. Let's use those figures for now. We are told that the person who was given the five coins, this guy multiplied the coins too, uh, and he had ten. The one who had two coins, multiply them, and for example, he had four. But there is this one who was given one. And he did not, yeah, he did not make a profit of it. And at the end of the day, he still had one. And we are warned that he who has little, even what he has, will be taken away. So the one gold that he had hidden was given to the one who had ten. Yeah, this uh, reminds us of this parable of the, of the sower. We are seeing some, they all received the same seed, but some gave fruit and it full. Another one gave uh, uh, fruit 60 fold, and another gave uh, fruit 30 fold. This tells us that in the kingdom, they are not all at the same strength. Even in the parable of the silver coins, we are told that they were each given a coin according to their, to their strength. According to their, to their strength. So, even the ones uh, bringing forward the fruits, 100 fold, 60 fold, 30 fold, they were bringing that fruit according to their, to their strength. That is the observation we have, we have observed. What is the application? What can we apply from what we have observed? We should pray to that. Yes, but we should, as the seed, we should prepare our soil so that when the Lord of, of this, when the soil comes and plants the seed, we will be able to to sprout and not to be choked by the problems of the world, like we have seen with the thorns, not to have our the seed that we have been given stolen by the birds, which we know the birds are of the air, and we know the prince of the power of the air is the devil. And we are also told that we should not be on rocky ground, that when the seed lands, uh, it will sprout quickly, but uh, when the sun comes, it will be spot because we are not well founded on the, on the soil. We continue to continue. So we have learned to apply to the good soil. We have learned to pray to the Lord of Harvest to help us prepare our soil to, us, to accept the seed and to be able to give us the strength not to be choked by the thorns of this life, which are the troubles, not to have our words stolen like when the birds of the sky come and steal the seed. And also, those are the applications. We continue. I uh, will continue from verse 10. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to him who has will more be given, and he will have abundance, but from him who has not, even what he has will be taken we we have seen it to the parable of the silver of the golden coins. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of which Isaiah said, "You shall indeed hear, but never understand; you shall indeed see, but never perceive." For these people's hearts have grown dull. And their ears are heavy of hearing, and their ears they have, they are closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn for, from their evil ways to, to be held by Jesus. So, for example, our observation that is from verse 10 to from verse 10 to 15. We see, for example, uh, the Pharisees. Jesus was saying. I thank you because you have revealed the things of God to the to the simple ones who are the fishermen and who are turned into disciples. But you had uh, God had hidden the the truth of who Jesus was from the from the land who are the Pharisees and the and the scribes. These are people who had what Jesus was saying every day. They had ears but they could not hear. They had eyes but they could not see. Eh? They are they are the people who had learned. And they knew that the Messiah will come doing all these things. 
And this is why Jesus uh, told uh, the disciples of John to go and tell him. Go and tell him that the blind can now see, the deaf can now hear, and the lame can now walk. And when John had this, it confirmed to him that the Messiah had indeed come. Eh? But they landed, the Pharisees and the scribes, will not capture that. They had eyes, but they could not see. Ears, but they could not hear. That is an observation. The application is, is we should pray so that we may not let our learning, yes, our learning blind us from seeing and hearing. Sometimes we go to schools and we study, for example, theology. We find the pastor has studied a lot of theology, and now this theology is trying to get him from the way of truth, yes. He's, try, he's trying to throw, uh, bring him out of the simple truth that he found in the gospel. And now you find them complicating the, the gospel. Yeah? Here we are told that when Jesus tells the Pharisees, you have placed a heavy load on the backs of the people who are hearing you, a load that even you yourselves cannot carry. You cannot even carry that load, but you have placed it on the people to, to carry The prayer points, we shall align them according to them, to what we should apply. To what we should apply, for example, and not allowing what we have learned to blind us from the simple, from the simplicity of the gospel, that Jesus was the word that took upon flesh and blood, and he came so that whoever believes may have life and have it in abundance. That is from verse 10 to, to 15. We continue from verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and, ye, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. That is 16 to 17. We are told that many desire to see the days of Jesus, but they could not see it. Many, eh? Envy to be in this in those days that Jesus walked upon the world, but they could not see it. But the ones who saw it, eh, they treated it like they treated. Uh, we are told that we should not throw our gold, our silver, our beautiful jewels to pigs because they are going to trample them under foot. These people, Jesus came as something golden from heaven, but but they trampled him under foot. They trampled him. They trampled him underfoot, and we are told in the previous sermon from last week that even the queen of the south eh, will stand against them, that generation, and even us, this generation, those who have failed to reach the wisdom. If the queen of the south came to Queen Sheba to extract wisdom, and now he is greater than King Solomon, who is Jesus came, and we have also failed to go and find wisdom from him, we also shall be cast out for those who fail to eat to the wisdom that came with Jesus Christ. If we trample his wisdom and have foot as pigs, we will be cast out as pigs. Verse 18, we read, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What is sown in his heart, this is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, and this is who hears the word, but he cares of the world and the delight in riches, took the word, and it proves unfruitful. It proves unfruitful. And for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and, and, and understands it. He indeed bears much fruit and yields in one case hundredfold, in another sixtyfold, and in another thirtyfold. That is to us twenty-three. And they are each bringing forth full, uh, fruit according to their own strength. As we have seen in the parable of the, the silver coins, that the master gave them silver coins according to their own strength, uh, according to their own talents. Of the sewer. when they when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it the evil one comes and snatches it away what is sown in his heart this is what was sown along the path yeah, that is 18 to 19. he hears the word but he does not under, understand it 
Why are they not understanding it? Sometimes we can say they are hearing it from someone who is complicating the simplicity of the gospel, that is an observation. They cannot understand it for because, uh, for example, they love the they love the pleasures of the world, and now understanding it, uh, it seems like a conflict of interest. Why are they not understanding it? Because we can say another reason is God has not yet drawn them. We are told that no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws them. Drawn by God. So that, those are some of the observations I'm saying. 20. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Uh, we are seeing the rocky ground. These are the people who receive it with joy. And what comes and says the word. Rocky ground. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. No root. No root. Okay. We are seeing that he has no root in him, himself. But endures for a while. And when tribulation comes and persecutions arises on account of the word immediately they fall away yeah. we see in revivals there are those people who always receive the word with joy they receive the truth with joy but when tribulation the trials of life comes eh, on account of the word they have no root this is someone we are told they have no root this is someone who does not study the bible on their on their self yes? they do not wait to develop the roots eh? they're studying the scripture praying while you are alone, you are told by Jesus but when you pray you should close the door eh? and kneel down in your own where nobody is seeing you and in that prayer room, that is where you are developing the roots but this person who receives the word with joy eh, during for example a revival and that fire they got from the revival that is the only fire that they are relying on they are not building roots by studying the scripture and, and praying so when these troubles come they will ask themselves eh? Is this fire that I received from this revival worth it? And you will see that they will conclude it is not worth it because they have not built roots, yes? They have not built roots by studying to find themselves approved. As we are told that we should study to find ourselves approved. Work men who are not ashamed to stand in the, in the truth. In it, As for what was sown among thorns, this is who hears the word, okay? But the cares of the world and the delight in riches choke there. One and it and it proves unfruitful. So here we see the lukewarms. The lukewarms who wants to partake of the riches of this world and the riches of of heaven at the same time. Yeah? Here is where Jesus says, How can you have two masters? How can you have two masters? How can you serve both mammon and and God? You will love one and eat the, the other. Yeah? So these are the people we are being told they are growing among thorns. And when they start seeing the sweetness of wealth, and they have not, they are not founded on the foundation. Not that wealth on itself is bad, but the love of wealth. If you have wealth and you allow the love to surpass that of God, now you are serving another God, right? because wealth can be an, an idol. So we are told this love of this wealth chokes them, and that love, that seed of the gospel comes out of them. And this is why Jesus, in another instance of the rich man who wanted to follow him, and Jesus challenged him to go and sell his wealth. Jesus challenged him to go and sell his wealth. And this young man could not go and sell his wealth to follow him because the love of the world had surpassed the love of God. This was an issue of love. Right? The love of his wealth had surpassed the love of... So how could he serve both money and God? So he decided to go back and serve the the man. The issue here, some people uh, conclude that the world is bad. The world itself is not bad, but the love of it. And if you allow the love to surpass the love of God, that when someone challenges you to leave the, the world and follow God, you find yourself being attached to the world. That means you have gone uh, into idol worship of serving mammon. Yes. For what was sown on good soil. This is he who hears the word understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in case of 100, 60, and 30. Those are the people we should uh, aim at. Yes, we should aim at according to the, own, the strength that Jesus has given us through the Holy Spirit to yield 100, to yield 60, to yield 30. Another parable he put before them saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sold good seed in his field. 
But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sold wheat among the wheat and went up with. So we see the kingdom of God. Yes, the kingdom of God is compared to someone who planted good seed. Yes, we see in the beginning God planted good seed in Adam and Eve. Yes, and the serpent came and planted a lie. He said, Did God really say that you should not eat of this fruit? And the lie was, God does not want you to become God as well, knowing what is good and evil. So that is the seed that the devil came to plant in form of a lie. And we are told the devil, the, uh, uh, the devil is the father of the father of lies. So the devil came and planted a lie. And this lie made him to see that God was trying to hide the knowledge of good and evil from them. And she took off the fruit, shared it with her husband. And at the end of the day, this seed, as we have seen, the kingdom of God is is like someone who planted good so a good seed, and someone came and planted there, uh, the the tears and went away. And now these tears, they are growing along with the with the good seed, yes. But when the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the weeds and went away. So when the plant came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the household came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The, the, the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, I lest it lest in gathering the weeds. You are put the wheat also. In gathering the the wheat, yes, the wheat, you are put the wheat also. In gathering the wheat, you are put the wheat also. What are we observing from there? Sometimes you may say that a servant, a servant of God, yes, they start they start off well and they they are elevated to the status of a, a pastor. And along the way, you find they they are swayed away by sins, yes? And after, after they have been swayed away by sins, you find that now they have become a, a weed, yes? Now they are a weed among the wheat. And they are a weed feeding the wheat. And sometimes you find, when you are trying to approve this weed, when you are trying to approve this false prophet or false pastor, there is someone who is genuine. I mean, it's their congregation. There is someone who is genuine and they are a weed. And when you are trying to approve this weed, this person gets discouraged. And they, when the weed, when the weed has been approved, that weed is also approved. And this is why Jesus tells us, let them grow, grow together, and we shall know them at the end of the day by their, by their fruits. We continue. Twenty-four, twenty-five. But when men were sleeping, his enemy came. We have so we have seen that. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the household came and said to him, "Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field?" But he said in twenty-nine, "In gathering the weeds, you are put also the weeds. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. Where we shall gather the weeds first, we shall gather the weeds first." And bundle them to be burnt, but gather the wheat into God's barn, which we know as heaven. So the wheat shall be gathered first to be burnt. And this is where we learned that God is going to separate the, the sheep from the goats. Yeah, we can tie those together, we can tie those together. God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. In verse 31, we continue, verse 31. Another parable he put before them, saying, The kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of the shrubs. It is the greatest of the shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. So here we see the kingdom of God is linked to a mustard seed which is small. Okay? This can be accounted to a new believer. A new believer who, who, had, whose soil was prepared 
And when the seed of God was put, the seed of God sprouted to bring forth 30, to bring forth 60, and to bring forth 100. Yeah? We can link those 30, 60, 100 as bringing new people into the, the faith. In, um, in verse 33, we continue. He told them another parable. In verse 33, the kingdom of heaven is like living, which a woman took and eat in three measures of flour, till it was all living. All this Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundations of the world. In verse 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. And the good seeds mean the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age. The harvest is the close of the age. And the reapers are the the reapers are the angels. Verse 38 and verse 37 he answered, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed means the son of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. In another verse we are told, If Lucifer himself hides himself as an angel of light, yes, if the devil comes as an angel of light, why not his servants? His servants will also masquerade as angels of light. The servants of the devil will have masquerade as the servants of righteousness. And this is, uh, is where we are told that in the last days there shall come false prophets okay, who will deceive people from the knowledge of truth. But gl gladly we are told if it were possible, meaning it is not possible, if it were possible, they will deceive even the elect. But the word in there means it is not possible. Because the elect are standing on the knowledge of truth, yes, who is Jesus Christ. Verse 14, we continue to read. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers. And they shall be draw and they shall throw them into the furnace of fire. Their men, their men will weep and gnash their teeth. Then the Russians will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Let us hear and not be like the Pharisees who failed to see when the truth was standing right in front of them. And they were carried away by the doctrines of men. Another verse tells us that we should not be carried away by the doctrines of men, which some have followed after into perdition. Verse 44 we read. The kingdom of heaven is like treasures in Eden on a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and brought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven, verse 47, it's like a net which was drawn into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but drew away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the rushes and draw them into the furnace of fire. There men will weep and gnash their tree. That is verse 50. That's from verse 50. We have seen the kingdom of God has been linked to someone finding treasure. This person has found treasure in a field. And now that they have found treasure on that field, they have went back and sold all that they had. And they have come to buy that land. And this reminds us again to the parable of the rich, uh, this reminds us again of the rich man and Jesus. Jesus told him to go and sell all that he had so that he could follow him. But this person, this rich man could not understand that what will be found in Jesus was much more worth it than what he had back home. 
But this person who has seen that this new land has gold, he goes back and sells all that he had, and he comes and purchases this new kingdom. And how will the rich man have purchased this new kingdom? We are told that he who gives to the poor lends to God. This rich man, if he had given all that he had to the poor, he will add lend it to God. And what he will have given to God, God, God will have returned it a hundredfold. And this hundredfold, not only will he as had received it on earth, but he will have received it as also treasures in heaven. He will have laid himself treasures in heaven. Where are they? The mold we are told, the rust we are told, the thieves we are told will not come and steal, ruin, and destroy them. 